uh, I think that's going to take me a few moments. And my intentions are to, um, you know, to see where everyone is with Hatchers, to provide some um, feedback also on where I am and what's on my plate, um, to share a deck I put together for Hatch Outreach that I think might be useful for more than just me. And um, see where we're with projects, see if there's any challenges that we need to solve or any problems that we need to resolve. And um, I'll pass this up to us. Thank you. Yeah, my intention like every week, uh, think with you guys and see what, yeah, see what how is going on Hatches Outreach. And yeah, maybe I could support something on, on something on the right, the, on the right thing. Yeah, back to you, Edo. Thank you. Um, my intention for this call is to sync, um, like everyone say, and to put some nail to the coffin to certain um, to the approach to proposals and so on. Uh, destruction, none, I think. Jake, what about you? Uh, my intentions are just yeah, catch up uh, who I reached out to, who I contacted, who I'm still waiting to hear from, and uh, distractions. Um, well, it's really hot today. How hot is hot? How hot is hot? Well, okay, so it's 11 in the morning and it's probably already like 87 outside. And I'm upstairs. My AC's downstairs and I should probably move, but I'm upstairs and it's not, it's really hot. It's really hot. But do you still use Fahrenheit in a Celsius-based country? What? Hey, hold on a second. Hey, you still <laughs> guys, I'm working. Hold on, hold on. It takes a little time to um, to um, move to a new scale. I did start a new scale after I moved. And only now am I doing Celsius. Oh, really? Only now am I doing Oh, wow. Like, it, it happens to me because I use, in Panama, we use um, um, kilograms. Which is the other one that is not kilograms? Uh, pounds. We use pounds and kilograms. And we use liters and gallons. So we are all the time switching between liters and gallons and pounds and kilograms. Uh, but the, the Celsius and Fahrenheit is something we never used. We never use Fahrenheit. We always use Celsius. So I always find it funny because I never, under, I never know how much eighty six is. Like I, I have zero clue how how much that is. Anyways, hello, hello. Libby. How you doing? Um, hello. Um, I was actually going to text you to see if you could come, Libby, to this call. Um, because there's a point on the agenda I want to talk to you. Um, so, um, do you want to start uh time, time with the hatch deck? Um, I have no clue what is that. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just did it over the weekend, so I haven't shared it uh, too widely yet. I got some feedback from um, Griff, Jeff, Livia, Jess. So I've got some feedback yet, and um, now I hope you guys can also provide some feedback as well. Um, I would say it is based on um, the experiences that I've had doing hatches so far and kind of keeping things a little... Um, consistent, I would say, for, for my perspective. And I changed some of, you know, the script we had in a certain order. I changed the order so that it's a TEC primer, the TEC hatch process, about TEC hatchers, next steps, any questions. I think we were doing what does it mean to become a TEC hatcher, and then we were doing the process. So um, it's not one size fits all. It should be adapted to who we are presenting to. Sorry, let me see if I could just put in presenter mode quickly. Um, does that work when I do it like that? Yeah. So you should, you, which I don't know if you see, um, do you see the full screen of it? I can't, yeah, I see, okay. So the TEC hatch, um, the first slide is just presenting like level setting, you know, introductions. This is what we're going to present today. Then getting an understanding of what the person we're speaking to already knows about the TEC. 
So do they already have set expectations? Do we want to, you know, help, help them um, understand the TEC, to help them understand the TEC better? We also need to know where, what the starting point is so that we can correct any misconceptions and or add to what they already understand. Um, and then it's sort of like, then is the yes and, you know, yes, all of those things. And it's the brain trust of token engineering talking about um, the, the people that are already involved in this, um, in the TEC, like Zargam, Simon, Trent, Jeff, Griff, you know, uh, creating an engineering society for token engineers. I don't, I'm, I'm doing this very quick because I just want to sort of give the, the lay of what it's like. Um, and then it's for anyone that cares about advancing token engineering, because this is how we're going to do it. In the, in the notes itself, there are some um, talking points, uh, which we can add to and build upon. Uh, talking about our differentiators. Now, for somebody that's already in the TEC, this is a two second slide, right? We're at the vanguard. What's special, our cultural build is very special. Not a technocracy, technocracy. the community chooses the parameters. And we have a strong community that attracts aspiring token engineers, researchers, academics, and other talented contributors. We have 270 active contributors and counting. So we're, we're growing rapidly. Then about the TEC hatch phase. It's a one-time event. How the how it's a two phase process, um, the two tokens, and then how voting will work in each phase of the project. And after they're thoroughly confused, you can lay on this nice image <laughs> to help you know part the part the clouds and let the sun shine through. Um, I'm expecting a lot of these just to be conversation starters, not necessarily. I mean, you know, just to, to be like to have conversations around these things. Um, the duration of the, the hatch um, is going to be set by the by our parameters, but the target for the hatch is in uh, sprint nine. And the key dates for the person we're speaking to is by April 20th, they have to have applied for the trusted seed. Hey, no reason not to do it right now. And by April 30th, they must have their uh, membership activated in the DAP. Now, this is these are soft, you know, like you can activate your membership the day that you donate, but um, like these are these are guidelines for like dates that would be like the dates to ensure you participate in the hatch. Um, so who are the TZ hatchers? Well, they're governors of the DAO. Um, they care most about token engineering. They acquire TC tokens at a discounted rate before the bonding curve is launched. Members of common of uh, trusted seed and they're pre-vetted. Now the two safeguards against um, this this uh, token offering being infiltrated with number go up people is that uh, there is a two-phase hatch process. So the bonding curve parameters, which would be the the mechanism for uh, for profit stability is actually set once people have committed to the hatch and the people that have committed to the hatch together set those parameters. So you cannot anticipate what the, what the, uh, what the profitability will be before you commit to the hatch. And of course, uh, proof of altruism, the members of the trusted seed. Benefits of being in common stack trusted seed. This hasn't changed much. It hasn't changed much at all from our original script. Exclusive content to exclusive access to future commons hatches. Legal protection from participation in commons hatch. Um, there's a bunch of notes here around the innovative legal strategy and um, protection around the the conception of the, the status of general partner in a DAO. Um, was something else I wanted to add here. It was something that Griff really recently clarified for me, and it was that the legal protection is that the DAO is going to launch itself. So uh, the general partnership comes in because it's not the participants launching the bonding curve. It is the DAO that's launching the bonding curve and people participate in the DAO. Yeah, so the, the, the big thing is that a lot of times we say, oh, we protect you from the issues of a general partnership. But it's not actually true. We can't avoid the fact that people are joining a general partnership. So what we can do is that if something bad happens, they are still liable. Okay, we we're not we're not they're not they don't like get to not be liable because in the end they have the tokens. Some other organization doesn't have the tokens. So because they have the tokens, they are liable for anything that the DAO does as an independent individual in the, whatever jurisdiction they're in, right? Uh, but if something bad happens, 
the Trusted Seeds legal like uh, Swiss membership, uh, their Swiss membership in the Trusted Seed will step up. And even though their house is still on the line, unfortunately, this is just the general partnership game, we will fight to the death for them. You know, this is an opportunity to set precedent. And this is an opportunity for us as an organization, like the only purpose of this legal organization is to protect them, uh, protect its members in these weird circ in some weird circumstance if something bad happens. Sorry, sorry, Tim. No, it's good. Thank you. That it's important that we reiterate this actually because it's, um, it's important to have a strong a strong um, presentation there. There was a question that someone asked. I don't remember who was in the past days. Who he was really blonde. Uh, she he was really blonde. And he has like, are you really like, are you really like? Is the real reason um, being part of the Swiss membership is really the reason why we have to sign up or? Uh, it's just a way to cover it up and get uh, funds. Like that person was like really straightforward. Um, question like like his his question was more about is it really to protect us or is it or is or uh, any other function for it? Basically, I'm sorry you were breaking up. Did anyone else hear that, or is it just my bad internet? Yeah, I heard it. It was a question of um, whether the whether the uh, legal um, protection, whether joining the Swiss Association, whether the legal protection is a red herring or just to um, acquire funds, essentially, right? Is it kind of, I guess the question is like, hey, is this a scam? Are you trying to make us join this legal association to get 450 die, or is there a real protection being offered here? Did I paraphrase that correctly, Eduardo? Yeah, I mean, they were, I mean, they, they understood the, the legal protection part. They were just like, are you really making all this just to get people protected? Like, that was like the yeah. bottom line. No, we, well, we're making all of this so that, I mean, first off, if they don't want to pay the 450, we have a scholarship. So it's definitely not like just to raise money. That is, of course, part of it. It is nice to have a way to fund the work that we're doing. You know, funding, funding uh, nonprofits are, is really hard. So, uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away from well yeah of course this is a way for us to raise money and it's a strategy for that but at the same time that's not the main purpose the main purpose is to create an innovative legal strategy not just for the TE Commons but the Common Stack wants there to be lots of Commons and this is a plug and play legal strategy for all of the future Commons to just just use you sign up for one membership. And now you're legally protected for joining all of these future commons, just like gravity, just like, um, you know, our common swarm uh, with the, com the common stack approach is to build these like plug and play modules that all the commons can use. The TE commons is the first one, but every commons from here on out will be able to use the trusted seeds legal strategy be able to use gravity gravity for conflict resolution be able to use the tools that the common swarm is developing be able to use the dashboard that the, that, that is working for the t commons and and it's like that these we're, we're trying to solve all of the problems that public good uh economies and, and commons focused economies are going to run into and the legal strategy is a very, very important, obvious one that would prevent a lot of people from starting these things. And that's that's why it's there. It's there. All right. Can you continue, Tim? Yeah, and that was excellent. Uh, I think I feel like I picked up something in that uh, in that too. And I'll I'll put those notes into our talking points <laughs> in this in this uh, presentation. Um. Okay. Here I guess. So. Um, Okay, so then about the Trusted Seed Association and then what that person's next steps are. Apply to Trusted Seed if they haven't, activate your membership and participate in the hatch in May timeframe. And then all the links they need to do that. Um, the idea is that, uh, oh, one last thing, um, explain the soft commit, the minimum raise and why we're asking for it. And then um, the, the follow-up is sending this entire deck to the person, praising the person, sending this deck to the person with a very short message. And that's the entire follow-up message. 
So, um, uh, yeah, what this, uh, I haven't test driven this yet. Um, I've put it together and went, run through it for some feedback, but this week I have a handful of, um, a handful of, on, uh, Hatcher outreach sessions that I will be using it, um, and improving it and adapting it to see how like the flow goes when, when, uh, I'm using this, um, in production, so to speak. Um, don't feedback? you think, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just said feedback. So, oh. um, don't you think it it will be to anyone who enters the TEC at this point, at the phase that we are, this this could serve as an onboarding for everyone because you not only covered you don't only cover the hatch part, you only, you also covered the other part, like what is the TEC. Blah, blah, blah. So, don't you think this is a kind of sort of all rounded document that we can use for um people who are new just wondering yeah that's a great question my knee-jerk reaction is that there's actually some other way to introduce them to the tec there's a better way it can be used but i think it wouldn't be the most effective way it would it would be more like um simplified yeah but presentation wise right now like at the phase that we are because what will happen for me is people get onboarded as a, as a contributor, a member, or whatever the DEC. And we are so close to the hatch. So uh, whether they like it or not, they will see a lot of the hatch talk around. So they need to be, uh, we would like them to be informed at some level. So um, so this document for me at this moment, maybe in the midterm doesn't work, but right now there is no other presentations as far as I recall uh, that we give or that we like more or less what Metaverde asked for for her, for her people, when she asked for um, documentation to be sent to the people, uh, this for me is something we can send easily uh, as a first, like, hey, um, take a look at this, and then if you have any doubt, come to the MA. Because we have this conversation today in the MA call that we had with Libby. <clears throat> there is a bunch of the same issue. We have a bunch of links, and and this document, in a way, serves for the purpose of uh, uh, a first glimpse to uh, what is going on on the TEC right now. Eventually it can be changed, it can be adapted, it can be shortened, if you will. But I think I like it for that purpose. Not only for hatches, but in general. There is something I've been uh, thinking a lot of uh, like sharpening this narrative in my mind that um, our structures are people. So whenever you need to touch on something, uh, we're creating this web, so the first thing you touch on is a person. And I think this will, like, get us a long way. And I feel like it's really nice to have someone coming for a call as the first commitment instead of sending a lot of documentation. I know this sounds very hard to scale or something, but... We've been kind of scaling with this, and the, the immediate feedback I have from a lot of documentation is like, whoa, I don't even know how to start looking at it. And then I read something, but then it's confusing, and I don't really know where to ask questions. And so I feel like the first, like, oh, come to this call. And then we have this first conversation, and then we can start sending documentation and and it might be how and, and it might be how. Yeah, for me, it's more about um, probably this is not a document to be handed over uh, as someone new, but I think for MA calls or, or any of these calls that we welcome new people, um, not only it serves because it has all the information there, but it, I think it helps to unify what we say because we always tend to forget parts or bits of the information. So I think it would be nice, maybe for internal use, maybe not for AMA or for onboarding, but I think it's a nice document to sort of, um, people who are nervous, people who are new onboarding and so on, can really help help get help from this document. Um, and in general, anyone who just jump in uh, to just have that as a sharing the screen background. Um, here's my thinking. <laughs> uh, this can certainly be a tool 
for anybody in the TEC who need who thinks that they can use it to share things during a call or during a conversation. Um, but certainly I think it's not clear enough to somebody new to the TEC to be used on its own, like, like Livia said, and like you were saying too, Eduardo. But I would also say um, if we could just put aside the onboarding conversation and just focus on hatchers and proposals, because um, I feel like that's critical to hatch, whereas the onboarding is nice to have to hatch. Um, so I would say uh, I would love if um, anyone would like to use this to outreach to hatchers, if we can, uh, if you uh, want to take it and use it however you see fit, you know, like make it customized to you. Um, and let me let me know if it works better than the off the cuff. I know Griff will not use it, but that's okay. Just so everyone knows, Griff does. Griff likes like the the genuine heart to heart, person to person. Uh, but I find that um, for me, sharing like making like knowing having something that I can follow and take the person on, with me is uh, is a little easier for my style. Uh, and I uh, think. Um, can yeah. you add the link to the agenda, please? Um, so we can yeah, sure. um, take a look at it. Um, for me, it's a very useful link. Uh, it's the same. It's, it, this is like a visual script in a way uh, right. that, that can be actually shared on the screen because of the script is not like it is. It was not meant to be shared on the screen. This one, you can at least share it. Um, and I think that's really helpful for anyone who is onboarding um, for anyone who is onboarding in general. All right. Uh, is there some someone else has anything to comment on uh, this document or something that need that it feels it need to be added? All right. Then we move on. Um, I can say on this slide, I had hoped to have. Um, Jake's mo uh, moving GIF here. <laughs> and it ended up just being too heavy for me to include. So probably I will do something different here, uh, but this is you know sort of a, play a first iteration and, and some placeholders. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, that's like really helpful. Um, so. Um, jump into the, the hatcher. Yeah. Ah, I have so much. I'm so excited, and I uh, and I have um, this person who is um, who has gotten back to me. I just have to get back to him with a date. So there's a bunch on my plate that are coming up. Um, I updated the issues so everyone can see it. Anyone who doesn't want to jump into this, I just took a screenshot of this and dropped it into the into the comments of the issue of the issue. Sorry, I, have, I hear an oh, echo. Sorry, what did you drop it? I hear an echo. Yeah, it's my. Um, I dropped. I took a screenshot of this and just dropped it in the um, in the Zen Hub. Let's see if I can find it easily because I feel like it's a very easy way for me to keep everyone updated without people having to look at the uh, the spreadsheet. Last sprint, I had done it as a checkbox, but I find that just takes a little time. So now I'm just sort of dropping here so people can just quickly have a visual of what's on my plate and where the status is. Um, and um, I would love to know, and, um, and I would love to know um, how everyone else is doing, if we can sort of go through this and filter by the people, the point of contacts. Um, maybe we I just, I don't want to go one by one that I we don't have to go one by one, but maybe we start with Livia cause you had some stuff. Uh, how's it going? Oh, I was looking for all the names in the, in there. Um, yeah, so I, I reached out to Kate and, and to Manu. And we we're trying to find a time. I already onboarded Nico, and I didn't reach out to Vera yet. Um, and Matan, I don't know, Griff, if you talk to him. I haven't, no. I can probably send a message. 
for Nico, um, was the soft commit added to the, uh, the file where we're tracking total amounts? Oh, not yet. I'll do that right now. Okay. Then I will just make this uh, status give a soft commit so it doesn't show up on our filters anymore. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. And um, I think I heard you're waiting to hear back from Manu and Kate. And uh, mm -hmm. you will reach out to Katan, Matan to set up a, a appointment for you and Gref, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Jay? And there is a... F uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Livia. There's a, there's a few other people that... Um, I made that tweet with the, with the tea flower, and I was grabbing the names that people commented on there. That might be like good people to onboard. So maybe I can add them to this list and, and reach out little by little. Yeah, that would be great. You just add it all the way to the bottom of the list. It's filtered by Eduardo now, but um, there is, actually if I could just uh, do this quickly, because we have a section for, this first section is for people. Um, the second section was recommendations. Oh, I thought that there were headings here. Oh, it must have been. This is why the heading's not showing. Ah. Ah. <laughs> there. Uh, so let's just move that there. So this section is groups. And then these are people that were recommended. And then if you just add it to the bottom here, we can start adding, we can start and put your name on if it's somebody, people that you'd like to reach out to, then we can start adding them. And okay. But the bottom, the bottom recommendations are uh, the groups are groups that are being recommended, right? Yeah, they're okay. they're like you know sometimes people gave us a whole group, you know like a group of people to reach out to. Um, I haven't really figured out how we're going to do this yet, or I don't know if you guys have suggestions or people want to want to pick a group to a whole group to reach out to. Uh, what we did with Curve Labs, uh, Jeff has a relationship with them, of course. So he um, had a first, we joined their like weekly sync up and he did a presentation of the trusted seed and the call to actions for the trusted seed. He has a separate presentation, which is um, everything you always wanted to know about joining the trusted seed here, everything you need to know to join. So he did that presentation and I offered to do the TEC hatch specific one with, with people and I'll start reaching out to them individually too, because I haven't heard back from anyone yet. So um, I think it'll be worth me actually, now that I've met them, um, you know, at individually asking them if they'd like to have these sessions. All right. Um, can we take a look at Jake's um, ones? Jake, how are you doing? And I'm taking Craig on one on Thursday. I do, I'm doing one at like 8.30 at night. So perfect for PST. Um, Jake, are you there? <laughs> I guess he's not. All right, let's um, jump to you, Eduardo. Sorry, what? What was that? No, Jake. We were asking for Jake. Okay. Um, Should we jump to you, yeah. Eduardo, until Jake comes back? Yeah. Sorry. I I just want to say I'm very distracted with the giveth launch. So, uh, but I'm here. I'm here listening for my name. Okay. Right. Um, on these ones, yeah, I had one doubt regarding the same question that is there, which is the uh, Felix, if it, if it is the same Felix or not. Um, I, I assumed it wasn't because there was different names to it. And then... Um, Does anyone know, actually? Is Felix Falafel Felix 350? Uh, Livia, you might know. Um... In, in Discord, Felix 350? Oh, I think this is Telegram, but could be. Um, what was the Telegram name? Is... Um, Grief, what was the name of the Felix that you awarded? 
I onboarded Felix. Cool. Um, uh, well, it's definitely Felix Falafel. He did change his Telegram name, but I don't know that it was Felix three hundred and fifty because when I go to Felix three hundred and fifty on Telegram, he's not in any of the. We don't share any groups. Oh, so, and the last, Felix Falafel is the guy who is gonna make the event that he invited us, right? Yes. Or is it not? Yes, absolutely. And then he's already onboarded. Yes, he. I mean, he wrote he wrote a a like a PhD level paper on the common stack like pattern. Okay, he's 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 deep. He's deep in it. Um. So can we change Felix Falafel? Um. And then I have to add Griff, this list. Sorry, can I just clarify, Griff? You said that you did the Hatcher outreach with Felix already, and he's given a soft commit. I don't remember this. It may have okay. happened. Okay, no problem. It, it happened because I was with you in that call. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm glad you're there. <laughs> I'm glad you were there. Cool. So Felix Malafel is done. We just need to check who is Felix 350. All right. Um, then I have Mitch and Tonga mm -hmm. also in in the process um yeah these are the other the other two i'm handling right now um which i didn't i thought i had labeled it give me a moment and i will label it now okay all right um so I think we're I think we're good for this. Feel free to come in and put your name on people that you are reaching out to. Um, my plate is quite full for this sprint, so I'm probably not going to be adding any. But if you have gotten through yours and need to take some more, um, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I will probably add a few names to this. Uh, my question, Tam, do you need? Are you covered on the second chair? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm so glad you asked. I'm not. Um, uh, let's see which ones I need help with. Well, the ones where it's just my name, actually, are the ones I need help with. Hold on. Let's see these three. So um, this one I'm waiting on. Um, this one I have on Sunday. Who would like to join me on a Sunday morning? <laughs> on Sunday. Okay. Um, and then this one is Friday morning because he's also in CET. Uh, maybe I could take Ivy on this one actually to, to, I'll, I'll have to ask if she's interested in doing it or not. Oh, I, um, mm -hmm. Is Sebnem on this list? Oh, sorry, no, never mind. Keep going yours. I will search for Sebnem. Okay. Um, Cyprian, I th we're doing Monday. Uh, but it's just, I think I offered him a tentative appointment on Monday that I said might change, might not. And then Sam, we're Friday. I don't have, I don't have a second on this one or this one. Um, I, what time they are? Monday is probably going to be 3 p.m., but it might be 2 p.m. It's going to be either 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. Um, He's an uh, EST. Sorry to put you on the spotlight. Septi, would you like to to be second in one of these calls? Actually, can I ask Jake if you would like to do it? It would be uh, your morning. Yeah, I mean, just to clarify, Zep, you said you don't do onboarding, right? You're just here to record. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like super comfortable talking, especially about money with other people. I don't know. So yeah, that's why I'm not doing it. Sure. But, but I, I mean, eventually if it was like super needed, I could help. Yeah. Well, so now we have nine people. So um, I feel like what we probably should do is continue to progress and become better and better. And Zep, if you want to do it, of course, you're a hundred percent welcome, but maybe, um, we make sure that the three new people that we're working with are really up to speed. Ivy, Juan Carlos, and Craig. 
before we start pulling people in um, because then we have to do the, the trick. I mean, then we should do the training session with you Zep, and put you in a good place so that you'll be successful when you start. Um, so I, I think I'd like to ask Jake, if you'd like to do this with me, otherwise I might try to pull in Juan Carlos, which is not too late for him. Oh, Jake might not be there. Let me just put a question mark. So I remember to add him and then Sam is Friday. Um, uh, let's see. Friday, it's full. Yeah, it's um, this one, 11 a.m. Yeah, it's 11 a.m. I can help you with that one. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks. Yeah, I um, I'm not sure how to yet figure out how to ask for seconds because once I get the dates in, I'm, I'm thinking I'll just send it to the Hatcher Outreach channel and ask for people that are available during those times. Yeah, I think. Yeah. They, sorry. I, I I just want to second this. It, is what is the best way to do this? Is it the Hatcher Outreach? Like if we just have a standardized thing, because this happens to me too. I just end up DMing a couple people and then I forget. Yeah. Like. I forget who else I'm supposed to DM. Um, I think the easiest way is if we have these nine people who, I mean, by the time so we will know if I if it's CT or it's uh, PST. So for me, it's about once you get the confirmation, you just uh, mention in Discord the person who probably will likely to be in the same time zone um, or available, and just tag them for them to know, like, yes, I can. Yes, I can't. Uh, I think for me, it's the simplest one because I see it in the moment and it can be, it doesn't need a protocol. It's just like, hey, I got this one available. You tag then six of us or four of us and then one of us will reply. And everyone else will see it in case someone picked it. Yeah, I think I probably think that's the best way even though I haven't done it yet. But it's the way that I was thinking might make the more, most sense. Okay, cool. Anything else on Hatcher Outreach? I feel like we've got good momentum now. I feel like we're we've got some pretty nice momentum. Maybe um, we just want to see where we are in terms of the soft commitments. Um, Quick question: um, Manu just answered me, and he said the only time available is nine thirty a.m. Europe time. Um, oh, I'll take it. Be like, yeah. Yeah. You take I'll it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can take it too. I mean, you, I can lead on that time if you want, and then so we then. Okay. Then you want to take it, Eduardo, and I'll second you? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, because yeah. you know you know Manu personally, right? You met him in person a couple of times, Eduardo? Yes, I do. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to have that human connection uh, be the lead, you know, like if you ever have met someone in person, it's such a rare thing these days. So, yeah. Um, What happened with Igor, Tim, by the way, at the end? Um, you asked me for his handler, but... Yeah, well, that was, um, I think, I thought that was resolved. I asked you what Igor, um, the Igor online, online was, and you told me, and I thought it was the one that you brought to the AMA session, yes. the one that you've worked with in Barcelona. Yes. That's my, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, you answered the question, and I updated the spreadsheet, that's all. Okay. <laughs> I that's just, it. we had his name as Igor, but nothing else. <laughs> and I was like, is this that Igor or yeah. uh, another Igor? Sure. Um, perfect. Um, so we, I wanted to talk about proposals. Um, we have a momentum, as Tamar mentioned, we are onboarding. Do you want to share or I'll stop streaming so you can? No, it's okay. Um, we are basically doing five to six people per week, which is a nice uh, volume of... Uh, uh, outreaching, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but then on the proposal side, we are a little bit weak. So um, this is the reason why I wanted to have Livy on this call um, for two things. The first one, um, it's the, the follow-up of the proposals that already exist on the forum that we talked about this last week, uh, Livy. Um, why I'm bringing this up? Because I have this conversation with Paula 
She was the one who proposed decade on uh, on the community call a few weeks ago, um, and she made she made a let's say a, a step forward, and she um, asked how she wanted to know how she could like move forward with her proposals, uh, how she can receive more feedback, and um, how we can feature it a little bit more in the community. And this is a question that is open to everyone. Um, and I would like to know, like, how do we proceed with this? Yeah, so I I have an issue open for that. I didn't do that yet, but uh, reaching out to everyone and, and moving the proposals to advice process. So that's very quick to do. I should probably do it today. Um. Once it reaches the, the advice um, process, is there anything else um, that, I mean, besides moving that and how do we bring people or, or interesting people to this uh, proposal? Like, how do we feature it more, as she asked? Yeah, I think we can start promoting them in the calls, talking more about them. Um, I think it's very hard even for for all of us, I imagine to like always be active in different things in the forum. It's a lot of information. So if we can like curate a few things for people to do um, every week, I think it's helpful. And we can also comment on them um, because every time someone comments, like the the it pops up in the forum so when somebody new enters they see that on the top i think you could start with us uh engaging in it and also maybe new contributors like telling them to take a look at it like see what you think make comments if you have any questions do we do we and this is an open question? Do we share when the proposal is published on the forum? Do we share it on the Telegram and so on, or is only kept on? Like, do, there is a, is there any other procedure after it gets posted, or it just stays there? I'm not sure. I understand what what do you mean? Like, for example, if I propose or like this decade uh, proposal get proposed on the forum um is there any kind of distribution process for it like does it go to twitter does it go to telegram does it go somewhere else besides the forum yeah i mean right now uh we don't have conviction voting yet so when we have when we have the comments upgraded uh, the proposals will go from the forum to the comments and that will be like the um the main attention strategy because proposals are being voted to grab funds. But now because we don't have that, we are in this early stage that we can only talk about them. Uh, tweeting is a good idea. Uh, maybe like a couple of favorite ones that we really think have uh, something to, I don't know, that, that it's all about tea and like, oh, this is a great, use case like a great proposal of what we want to fund we can promote them um yeah we can coordinate with comms to see what is the best way to to put them up maybe um and then um there is a first part which is approaching you um new people for proposed i saw the list of 41 um that grift sent um it's on the it's in the telegram it's on the discord uh um, hatch outreach channel uh if anyone wants to take a look um there is a lot of people there are some of them that has already been um talk to like uh Wither Dow, and there are a few of them the wild cards a few of them that has already already been um, talked to or sent to. Um, so the procedure that I'm following right now um, is to basically gather, <clears throat> sorry, 
gather the links um, via Twitter or email and reach them out and explain them <clears throat> a little bit of uh, our intention and what we are doing. I want to know if there is any if anyone can come if anyone has any other suggestion of how to approach these people. Um, I, I'm still uh, I will put the list of of people who are left to be contacted on the TEC grade and share it for everyone if anyone wants to take a name on it. Uh, but my question remains: um, I will use the um, the TEC Twitter to reach out for most of these proposals. Uh, most of these projects. Does anyone has any other idea of how to reach them out? I will take that as a no. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so I think that's pretty much all for today. Um, Tam, do you have any other? or something else you want to comment on? Um, no, not necessarily. I see in the agenda you wanted to talk about the Hatch Outreach AMA. tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Uh, yeah. I guess the question is who is going to be there? And um, do we have anything specific we want to uh, to have for tomorrow or think about for the t tomorrow? It's at 1 p.m. CET. Yeah, um, I, will be, I will be there like every Thursday. Um, Ideally, I will try it out your presentation if that's possible and if you feel comfortable with. And I put it there because I wanted to know how did it go last week. That's why I wanted to know. Since you were leading the call, Tim. Oh, was I? <laughs> you want me to know what happened last week? <laughs> um, so last week, uh, one person showed up, and um, it. I basically gave him a very private introduction to the TEC. So, like, you know, basically a, a, a quite a long brain dump. And um, it was more of a, he was completely new. So it, it was less of a, um, you know, question about the hatch as it was questions about everything in TEC. His name was Sinan, S-I-N-A-N. And uh, he has some personal stuff that are coming up along with a, you know, a move. But I sent him to the community call to TEC Labs and to TEC Params. Those were the, those are sort of where he, he showed some interest. And um, he seemed quite motivated. And when he has more time, we'll sort of come back because he's very curious and has been following Ethereum developments for, for a little bit. Did he explain how he arrived to the call? How did he yes, get? Yes, he did. He saw Livia's presentation in ETH Denver. Oh. So he's the not second. To Livia, um, but... He's the second <laughs> one who comes from Livia's presentation, actually. Livia, we need you to do more presentation. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, okay, so that, yeah, that was the reason why I put that on the agenda, and then. Oh, God. And then we had um, the AMA call today. Um, how did how uh, this guy came? Paul, uh, he came from Jess, if I'm not wrong, Livy, and he comes from a marketing uh, entrepreneurship background. He has been some uh, startups and so on, and he wanted to know information about the DEC. He didn't seem to know much uh, about um, the Hatch. Uh, but he seemed interested in helping, basically. So yeah, that was on that. And then in content creation, um, I saw the notes on of grief on um, on the piece of how to become a hatcher. Grief, the only um, the only question that I have for you on on that. Um, and the document is if you have finished or if there is more to add. And secondly, I, I have not finished. I didn't get the, I didn't, I, I stopped where, yeah. You can and, see where, it's obvious where I stopped. <laughs> and there is a word that I, the only thing that I caught my attention with is you, you change the word to that will get a disproportionate amount of governance power. Is that the right word? 
Yeah, I mean, it could be a different word. Um, but the main idea is that if you're a hatcher, you get a lot of gov you get a lot of, t of governance power as in tokens, right? Uh, for very little money compared to later. So disproportionate <laughs> is is a word, but if if you have pause on that word, we need to change it. Yeah, it's just that it felt for me it, it has a uh, kind of a negative uh, con uh, context. And yeah. I, that's the only thing besides all that. I I accept this most a, of the deeds. Um, yeah. This is a very common problem I have, and I really appreciate you guys watching out for it. Like, I often say things with negative context, uh, connotation, uh, and help me. Uh, it's like some weird self deprecating slash like audacity kind of like vibe that I right with and i don't really like it so i really appreciate your help on cutting it out um and so the last part for you to review is a uh, phase two um of, of how yeah. Mina. okay which looked mostly right it looked mostly right i mean there were uh in there were some important things that were like that were not correct in the other steps mm -hmm. so like I would just say if these are common misperceptions, it's really good that we like take them out and clarify them, you know, uh, because, yeah. Yeah, but, I think what has come out from all these articles, TLDR and so on, is the, it's that we are aligning on the same kind of, oh, these are the steps, oh, these are the process, and we are like finding this common ground um, that will be, that everyone will be end up using as a reference so i think that's pretty much um quite helpful um yeah well once you check the last part um the article should be ready um and i will pass it on to nate see what he thinks or anything that needs to be uh distribution wise um and then we have manu um finishing um the uh, the diagrams from jeff um and that should be ready and then there is the five steps to hatch which is a document that mitch created it, I, it was asked by by jess um and it was a document um that i've seen i think jake put so, sorry i think griff put some notes on it and it's a document that is mainly uh the only idea is to have a, a easy read fast read about the hatch and that could be sent to anyone and it's based again on this on the scheme of uh, Jeff's diagrams. So that should be ready this week, um, hopefully. And then we will have kind of all the informations um, that we need for this. Like I feel that like we have now your presentation time. We will have a medium article about the hatcher, how to become a hatcher. We have the forum post. Uh, we will have the TLDR, and then we will have most of the elements that a technical person will require or will want to know about the hatch. I don't know if I'm missing out something from uh, information that is needed, but I think we will be covering everything with those pieces. Do you agree, Tom? Um, I guess I need to go back and look at everything we have again. We have the forum piece. What is the medium piece that we have? Um, this is two options. Um, we either um, upload this, the how to become a hatcher as forum post and as a medium article, uh, or we upload kind of the TLDR, um, which is more technical uh, with the diagrams illustrated. It's, it's, these are the options. Yeah, I I don't um I don't know what the answer is and, and I don't know I don't have an opinion yet until I have another look at it. been uh been carefully looking at those pieces yet until they were sort of uh, ready to go, but uh, maybe we can circle back on this next week. Yeah, sure. Alrighty, um, thanks everyone for coming. We are five minutes um early and so take a coffee. Uh, thank you so much for joining this call and I will.